Welcome to the Life Pro Podcast, where today I have the pleasure of having a mindset coach. His name is Tim Hall, and our topic today is growth mindset. I'm really excited to hear about all this and especially hear about your journey and how you've landed as a mindset coach. How are you doing today, Tim? Tim? I'm fantastic. How about yourself? Fantastic. I'm very excited to have this conversation. So uh, let's get into it. Um, tell us a little bit more about your journey and um in life and what, what what's kind of brought you to to who you are today yeah it's it's a it's a fair journey it's a long story um it's an emotional one look i growing born and bred in australia perth western australia look i had a great upbringing um playing sport you know living that beachy outdoor life everything was good and then around 13 years old my mum got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and that's when really my life took a different path uh, back then, they sort of didn't know too much about the disease. So her life, and she only fortunately suffered with it for a couple of years before she passed away. But in those two years, there was a lot that happened to me. There was a lot of you know beliefs and, and personality traits that were instilled inside me. And yeah, it was, it was a tough time sort of going through that 13, 14, 15 years of age. I took that, I held on to that. There was trauma that comes along with that sort of stuff. Uh, and it wasn't until I was about you know, 21, 22, where I really wanted to get in touch with that and, and work on my own development and, and really work on the traumas that look, I felt were holding me back. I felt like I had so much more to give. Um, look, I was a good sportsman. I probably should have gone further in my sports career. Uh, I suffered at school. I suffered in relationships. And I really wanted to discover where that was coming from. So for a good six, seven years, I was doing a lot of personal development work, um, like learning different ways to be able to come back within, to, to deal with traumas, to utilize tools that helped me expand my mind, to you know, get me back on a path where I felt fulfilled and excited about what the future lied for me. So that was another journey in itself. And I was able to heal a lot of wounds through that with other family members uh, and really come back into the strength of mine. And then for the last couple of years, yeah, during COVID, actually, I, I met my girlfriend who's originally from New York. She was in Australia at the time. Uh, mm. COVID hit, couldn't travel anywhere. She was living in Bali. Bali was like a terrible place to be. Being from New York, that was just as bad. So she spent a year and a half in Australia with me, which you know, really fast-tracked our relationship. Right. And then, of, yeah, April 2021, we said, let's go on this journey. And I sold up my part of the business. Uh, finished my coaching. I was coaching a semi-professional football team at that stage, finished that job up and we took off and came to America to, to really chase a dream and a passion of mine. And and that's mentoring people. It's, you know, for my sporting career, not reaching the heights I wanted to. I've got a lot of experience about facing right. obstacles and when our back's against the wall and you know, then taking that into coaching, that's where my passion fell and just yeah, mentoring young people about, you know, really yeah. discovering their strengths, really discovering what their powers are and how to just utilize that on a daily basis to get the most out of themselves. So that's what I've been doing here for the last couple yeah. of years. And you know, it's been a journey since I've been here. There's been lots of mistakes. Yeah. There's been so many highs and lows, but I've loved every minute of it so far. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've been through a lot and you've had to overcome a lot of obstacles. I would imagine at age 13 to go to such a traumatic event and then have to, you know, suffer through the years of seeing the decline at a, at a mm -hmm. such an impressionable age. I, yeah. That's rarely, you know, I, I think going through those moments is what allows us, enables us to provide growth in our in our lives and and do better. We almost, you know, when we when we feel the pain of something so horrific, we almost want to do better. Mm -hmm. It's to in spite of it right like we you know, yep. we we felt that way and we don't want to feel that way anymore so yep. how would you how would you you know you start, you teach the growth mindset um explain to people what what does that mean what what is it well how would you define that growth mindset yeah look you, you make a great point we're we're subconsciously tuned in to grow to survive to become our best version of a human being Unfortunately, we live in a world where there's a lot of distractions. There's so many obstacles that we face that really pull us down. And you know, we can get caught in living in that fixed mindset. And the, the terms are probably all heard that, that fixed mindset and growth mindset. If you want success, if you want fulfillment in life, you really have to live in a space of growth mindset. And that's 
you know, that's not just about, you know, waking up every day, wanting to experience new things in your life and live life to the full. It's also about embracing the challenges, embracing the obstacles that you face and not letting that pull you back, but taking that as an opportunity to learn, as an opportunity to evolve. And when you can get your mindset in that growth space, then you look at every day at a different perspective, that when things show up in your life, you don't hesitate. You don't go into emotional fear or stress, anxiety. You want to take it on board. You want to face it front on. And by doing that, that's when success starts to grow. That's when new opportunities will just start to open up in your life. That's when you'll start to feel more fulfilled because you're pushing that boundary that we've been surrounding ourselves with for so long. We're pushing that out. We're exploring a little bit more. We're becoming a greater version of ourselves. So for me, a growth mindset, it's a must. It's an absolute must. If you want to have success and fulfillment, you have to have a growth mindset. And that, so that involves having an open mind and being open to change. You got to be open to change. If you're in yeah. fix, if you're so worried about you know things that are happening around you, you're not living authentically. You're so much right. in more controlled by you know the environment that you're living in. So right. being open, being willing to evolve, being willing to make mistakes, and understand yeah. that's all part of your journey. That's a growth part mindset. Growth. That's part of growth. So you know, I have uh, you and I have a connection in that you know. Sports are very important to me. You know, you've grown up, grown up around athletes and and worked with athletes, um, and I'm fascinated by you know Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan, uh, Tom Brady, all the greats in in the world of sports, and they they all have they're all meticulous and they're all like looking always to grow. So what what are some of the tools that you know you've used with athletes or you've observed that athletes use to 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 be the best version of themselves and and be in that constant growth mindset. Yeah. So, so back in Australia, I was working with some professional teams and I could see a common trend with a lot of the guys that had long successful careers. And unfortunately, there's a lot of coaches out there in the sporting world that only focus on the physical, which is good. All right. We all have the ability. We need to be at our physical prowess to be successful in our sport. But the trend I was noticing with the guys that were having long successful careers they were all working on their mindset. They were doing something in their day to be able to nurture it, to grow it, to find balance in their mind. And you look at yeah, guys like Michael Jordan, like he's got that famous quote saying, the game's 80% mental, 20% physical. And Tom Brady's another one who would do a lot of meditation. Steph Curry does a lot of meditation and mindfulness. Yeah. These guys know to get the edge on their opponent, they need to come back within. They need to get their mindset in a place where they can access another 20, 10 or 10 to 20% of their ability and then utilize that in the performance. So when I work with athletes, we don't just focus on the off-field side. We focus more, oh, sorry, on the on-field side, we focus more on the off-field side. So I call it two different personalities. And we always start with our off-field personality. When you wake up every single day, what's the first thoughts going in your mind? What's your internal dialogue about? Because who you are off-field, determines who you are on field so we put all our focus into that area to begin with and then over time what i start to naturally see in these athletes is it just transition into the way they train the way they prepare themselves and then ultimately into their performance interesting so is there there's an element of manifestation right like having a vision of where you know when they're meditating or journaling or coming up with where they want to be have that you know vision of what they want to work at and then then do the work. Yeah, yeah. Because our mind can only see in the past and only can see the present. It, it can predict the future, it, but yeah. it's, if it hasn't experienced it, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of fears that then come with that. Yeah. So manifestation, visualization, two big practices I'm part, I am experience with my clients. I incorporate that through breath work and meditation mm. to be able to paint that clear picture. Because right. for us to achieve anything in life that's ahead of us, we've got to be able to see it. And when we can yeah. clearly see it, then we can start to feel it. We can put emotional attachment to it, emotions mm. of excitement, emotions of feeling proud. And when we make that connection, then we're more likely to take the steps to achieve it. Right. But if we just sit there and say, I want to do this or I want to achieve that, if there's no emotional attachment, if there's no connection from your mind to what you're trying to, to achieve, if it can't see it, if it doesn't believe it, then you're easily going to get pulled off course. 
Yeah. So yes, manifesting, getting clear on your picture, writing down in detail the steps that you need to take to get you to where you want to go, visualizing everything, the environment around you, the people around you, the emotions you're feeling on that journey. That's what creates that belief. And when you yeah. have that, like I said, you're more likely to take action and achieve it. Yeah. I think the number one thing that obviously criteria in elite athletes is that they truly believe they can be the best in the world. And I, and I think that that's a problem with some people's growth mindset is they, they have a limiting belief they they're, they, they can't do it. They, it's not physically possible. They don't believe that they can do it. How mm -hmm. do you over, how do you overcome that limiting belief that obstacles that we set on ourselves? It comes down to perception. So when we wake up every single day, our mindset is tuned to a perception. We take that out into our day. So by having a morning routine where we can get our mindset more flow, connected more to you know, things that we're looking forward to, connected more to our authentic self, then, may, may, then we are more willing to take steps into the unknown. We're more willing to, to just you know, embrace whatever our day shows at us. So instead of us waking up every single day, and whenever I do a breathwork session, I always talk about this. The moment you roll out of bed, it's like we put our barriers up and we mm. hide behind these barriers because they keep us safe. They're there to protect us. But what they're also doing is they're limiting the opportunities we can experience in life. So when we can wake up every single day and shift our perception, shift our mindset to be more open, be willing to embrace, and when opportunities come up, to be able to say, okay, this is part of my journey. I want this. I need this. Then all of a sudden, we start to create more confidence within. We start to see that greater belief. We start to want to take greater steps and actions into that destination we want to go. So for me, it's first thing in the morning. As soon as you get up, doing little things like journaling, like breath work, like meditation to shift that perspective within. And that's what's going to give you that jump start to be able to let go of that limit mindset to be more open, be more willing to embrace whatever shows up in your day. And if you consistently do that, then naturally the trend to your success is always going to grow. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, you know, limiting belief and then there's a, there's, there's an element of confidence. Of, yeah. uh, how do, how do you, I mean, with your experience of your clients, what, what do you do to kind of build confidence? Confidence comes when you're authentically living through yourself. So you know, we've got so many distractions, social media, the like COVID over the last few years. There's been so many things that have pulled that authentic version of ourselves away. We've been so yeah. distracted and we can get caught up in other people's lives. So again, coming back to that off-field personality I was talking about before, it's really about discovering that authentic version of yourself because that's your most powerful version. And when you're aligned and connected to that authentic version, then all the actions you take, the way you think, the way you feel, it's all going to be aligned to where you want to head in life, to what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. So when I come across athletes or work with clients who you know, that really don't have that confidence, we get down to the nitty gritty. We work out what are your values? What are your values as a human being? Because if you show up every single day living your values, that's when confidence will start to grow because you're showing up as your best version of yourself. So by doing little things like that, by by understanding what your goals are and having a plan and every single day you're taking small steps to help achieve your goal, that's what builds belief. But by continually nurturing that off-field personality and growing that, eventually that is just going to flow into all areas of your life through confidence and belief. I love that. And I, you know, I, I'm a big proponent of that. As long as you know where you, you, you can't, you can't get to where you want to go unless you know where you're going. And that's the Absolutely. first thing, right? having the vision, having the belief, building the confidence and being patient, right? Like having certain expectations and milestones that you have to hit and, and goals for yourself and not being discouraged when we hit roadblocks because all of us hit roadblocks. If if it was easy, then everybody would do it. And yeah. if it's hard, it's probably because it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and you use a great word, patience. It's something... Yeah. Look, my journey coming to the US and, and starting a business over here, not knowing anyone, you need patience. You're going to understand you're going to have good days. You're going to have days where you day. make mistakes. You're going to have days where you just feel like you're taking four steps backwards. But the fact of the matter is if you're consistent, if you're showing up yeah. every single day, and it doesn't yeah. have to be big steps. And this is what a lot of people think, oh, for me to achieve this, I've got to take these big steps. I've got to do this. No. I've got to do that. No, no, no. Let's just start small. 
We need that right. foundation. Let's build a foundation that we can yeah. build on. And that starts with small steps. So even for me, every single day when I wake up, like I love life, I embrace life. I've got energy when I jump out of bed. Yeah. But even when I face those challenges, even when I know I've made a mistake some way along the line, I'm still eager to like, okay, what do I learn from this mistake? All right, what am I going to do in the future just to be able to shift that and hopefully make that work for me next time? That's the small step I'm going to focus on. I'm not focusing on what's been, I'm focusing on where I'm going. Yeah. And I, you know, you mentioned getting up in bed excited. I think that's really the litmus test to knowing if you're on the right track, right? Is when you're excited to tackle the day, you're excited for Monday mornings. And on the weekends, you're excited to rest, like you're finding yeah. that balance, right? Like, you know, you're on the right path and you feel comfortable. You could sleep at night and you're making that progress to keep your, keep, have your mind at ease. And, you know, working with a coach, I'm sure is, uh, is, is probably necessary for a lot of people you know, to have that mentor, to have that guidance, uh, to be able to say things out loud and like, listen to yourself and, mm -hmm. and really, you have to really believe in what you're saying, you know, you know, or believe in what you're doing in order to, yeah. to, uh, to achieve your goals. Yeah. Look, I, I say to everyone, everyone I believe in this world that we currently live in needs a coach. All right. Because, you know, we've got close people around us who we can communicate with and we can share with, but to get a different perspective, to have someone where there's no emotional attachment and you can just openly share get some advice back, get a different perspective back. All right. That's where we can all of a sudden yeah. just make little shifts in the way we're living in what we're doing. And we can mo most likely find that, that path that we're desiring. When we talk with people who are close to us to have that emotional attachment, they're always going to give you the words you want to hear, or, or they're mm -hmm. going to re be super critical and make you really start to doubt yourself. So yeah. I, I always been a big component. I've, I've had one, my own coach for the last probably 10, 12 years off and on. Uh, whenever I feel like my life is falling a little bit off path, off track, I'll always seek out to find someone who I can just, yeah, build these communication, yeah. get some new tools, get a greater understanding of where I am now so I can realign myself to where I want to go. I love it. That's, that's, that's great. It's all about, you know, like you said, manifesting, journaling, self-reflection, being conscious, being deliberate in your actions and in having the proper intentions and, you know, value, valuing your time, like, you know, having a mm -hmm. sense of self-worth and, and we all deserve the best in life. We all deserve to, to have, you know, to maximize our experience here in life, because as you know, our time is limited, you know? Um, yep. Yep. And, and I'm sorry to, go ahead, I was gonna go say, sorry to interrupt though. Uh, you bring up another great point. So you just, you're going and you're just triggering my mind. Yeah. Respecting your time. That's another thing, scheduling. Like, you know, you're right. We've only got 24 hours in the day. You've only got one life. You only live for a certain amount of years. If you ultimately want to achieve greatness in your life, if you want to have a successful business, relationship, whatever, you need to utilize your time. So once again, I work with a lot of younger athletes, like in their early 20s, and they don't understand the concept of like a scheduling, of what they need yeah. to do. They wake up in the morning, go through the motions, then have their breakfast, go to training, practice, do some gym work, do a bit of recovery. Next thing you know, they're home at three o'clock. Now what? Now what am I doing for the rest of the day? You've yeah. got so much of your day where you can maximize it, where you can grow, where you can learn something new. You can build relationships with people in your life. And when you actually stop and start to schedule out your day, the first thing you realize is how much time you actually have. Because when it's all up here and you're trying to schedule your day in your mind, you're thinking, I've got to do this. I have to have done that. I've got to do, get that done. I've got to get this done. Oh, next week, I've got to get this done. But when you schedule out in front of you, you start to actually say, man, I've got an hour here. I've got two hours there. Oh, I'll get that done there. Once again, then you're more likely to start taking productive actions, things that you value that's going to help you grow and be happier within. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I, I even schedule my, you know, schedule when I go to the gym and what muscles I'm working out, like very specific, because if I yeah. schedule it, then I'll do it. If I if I just yep. say, oh, I'm going to go to the gym on Tuesday and I wake up not feeling it, I may not do it. But the fact that it's scheduled, I've blocked out the time, I've created the routine and, and created the habit in order for me to do it. And, and you're absolutely right. Having conscious and maximizing your time, making the most out of it. And then, you know, there's a lot of overlap between coaching athletes and living our careers and living our lives and our relationships and we can we can improve all those things um mm. and and I, one thing that i would add is 
there, I know there's people out there that are just comfortable in their routines and comfortable in what they're doing on a day to day basis. But I, I believe that we all can grow. We're all going to continue to grow. We could always be better and we need to do whatever we can to self reflect and in in whether it's improving our relationships or interpersonal relationships um, or even our careers growth growing is key and uh, yeah, so look, I'm, I'm glad we had this conversation about this topic today yeah yeah and i just want to add one more thing like even if your even if your journey in life isn't about building a business or having greater success a growth mindset is just going to bring more fulfillment in your life you're just going to feel happier within you it's going to feel like you're accomplishing more you're more productive and that's just naturally coming because our mind wants to continue to grow. Even though you yep. could be 68 years old, your mind still wants to keep growing. It still wants to keep learning. So by feeding your mind that stuff, having that growth mindset, well, your mindset's going to make you feel good. It's going to release those chemicals yep. into the body where you wake up every day feeling a bit more excited when you're in the mo doing moments and, and you're more present in those, you're going to appreciate and be grateful yep. for those a lot more. So yeah, being a growth mindset isn't about just, you know, success. It's a lot about personal fulfillment too. Yeah. And I would add diet and exercise, right? Like your health is also vital in your growth and, and you know, having all those, everything works together, you know, your mind yep. and your body. Yep. hundred percent. So, you know, the reason I started Life Pro Podcast was, you know, the, the concept is everything in the world comes with a manual except for life itself. Um, so everything, all of our topics here are, are ways to improve lives and, and live our best lives. And uh, three, I asked the same last three questions to all of my guests. So I ask you, what is one thing you want to teach the world? I want people to understand that they have so much more potential than what they're living. And that's been the journey of my life in that for a good chunk of it, I was just living in fear. I was living in emotion. I was uncertain. I was self-doubting. And it wasn't until I stopped and started working on myself, I started to really understand the potential I had. And by, re and by doing that and consistently doing that every single day, hey, I might not be the best coach out there, but I'm pretty successful because I do the work. I do the personal growth work. I understand who I am. I know what my strengths are. And that's what gives me the confidence to step into that. We all have that ability. We all have that opportunity every single day to step into our full potential. But you've got to be willing to do the work. It just isn't going to be handed to you. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, uh, like you said, you, you might not be the best coach, but you got me pretty pumped. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, uh, you know, that's, it, it, that's all it's about the getting excited, getting excited about doing the, making the changes, taking care of yourself, um, and, and doing what's best for you. Because ultimately, you know, when you, when you have a better, best relationship with yourself, you're going to have a better relationship with uh, others and, and you're by default, you'll grow and, and you know, Spot all your relationships on. will grow and your life will grow and you'll you'll be happier, which is all all that, all that we want, right? Is to be happy. <laughs> 100%. Yep. Correct. Is there a book that, uh, you know, really stood out or maybe, you know, impacted your life, changed your life? Uh, I get this question asked a lot and I have the same answer and I've got it right here. <laughs> it's this thing here. This is my journal. This is the Jim. one book that has changed my life because yeah. the 10 or 15 minutes that I journal every single day has changed the direction, how I think, how I feel, how I live, the right. actions, all the way, everything that contributes to the outcomes in my life has stemmed from this book. So yeah, I, I, I'm not a huge reader of, of autobiographies or anything like that. I love podcasts. I love reading about research and stuff like that. But when I think of a book, this is the only book that really matters to me. This is like my Bible, my personal yeah. Bible. And I utilize it every single day. And boy, does it make a difference in my life. I agree with that 100%. I, you know, I haven't been journaling. It's been a while since I started journaling, but recently ran, it, ran into the book that my journal. And it's a very nice cover and it's beautiful. And I'm like, brought it out the other day. I'm like, I need to start journaling again. I sometimes yeah. I'll, sometimes I'll do it a digital journal, but I think there's something about writing it out. Like that makes it a little bit more, I know, connected with it. Yeah. I, I challenged myself this year to do it every single day. So I think we're at right. day 272 when I did mine this morning. So right. yeah, every single day for me, it's a natural right. routine to do it. 
but you're right. By writing it, the good thing about when we write in our journal or when we write in general is we're actually reflecting and processing as we're writing these words down. When we do it on a laptop or on a computer, we don't have that same connection. So yeah. again, I recommend definitely start writing because that's what gives you clarity on the words you're putting on paper. Yeah, and you inspired me to to start it up again. So love it. I'll keep you updated on how that goes. Yeah, I'm <laughs> going to be checking in. <laughs> so last question, how do uh, how do people follow you or get in touch with you? Uh, most of my content's on Instagram, which is Tim Hall underscore Pro Minds. Uh, I've got a YouTube channel, which has some breathwork sessions on it, if people want to experience that. And that handle is Breath Warrior. LinkedIn's under my normal name, but you can access all that through my website, which is timhallbranding.com. Tim, I had such a good time talking to you. Uh, you inspired me in so many ways. Um, really enjoyed your talk. No, I appreciate the time. And yeah, take action every day. Keep smiling. And you're on a great path yourself. And I'm excited to see hopefully some of your viewers step into a few of these little things and then create their own growth in their own journey. I appreciate you, Tim. And I remind everybody to like, follow and share, help us spread the word. Take care, Tim. Appreciate it. Thank you.